So tonight we'll talk a little bit about she would talk about it short, hopefully, and uh, cause me going a little too long. And um, and we'll entertain questions. That isn't to say that it's not a big subject. She would talk is, is considerable. Our concern with it is uh, narrows down the field a little bit. Uh, Shiva, that means to say, is of concern uh, throughout almost all of Hinduism. He's showing up in one way or another. Um, so, on account of that, it's difficult to sort out who he is, what is who's the root of Shiva, and so on and so forth. But, of course, we're uh, blessed by our founding acharyas, Goswamis, Shiva's acharyas, uh, feelingly described as um, very uh, compassionate persons who, with compassion for the jivas in mind, researched uh, thoroughly the sacred texts, Nana, Shastra, Vichaya, Nankaripada, Osadharma, Samastapaho, Boganumitaka, Tumuni, Matyoshana, and they extracted from this the essential and uh, really coherent message of what Pujapatridamar sometimes described as a jungle of sounds. Of course, speak of Shiva, the whole thing is that a jungle of sounds. To the extent, for example, that I believe um, it's often thought in, in academia that there's no coherent, you know, message in all these sacred books of the Hindus. There's different, diverse, contradictory statements. Of course, that's the purpose of the sutras of the as It's thought to show the concordance of the Upanishads and, uh, and so forth. But um, but I think we're fortunate that Goswamis have done that and they've really done what Narada told Vyasa to do that resulted in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam that he's spoken in so many ways without uh, emphasizing in no uncertain terms the importance, efficacy of and central uh, and essential role of, of bhakti if the jiva is to attain its uh, freedom and beyond that beyond moksha its highest prospect in brain whether it be aishvari brain or madhurya reverential or sweet and intimate. Um, so, saying this, as you know, to Vyas, uh, Vyas sat under the instruction of Narada, <coughs> meditated, and, and um, he um, came out of his, medit his meditation and the samadhi basha, the language of samadhi, is what we have in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam, this mature work. And so, as I'm saying, the Goswamis, they kind of, in the same spirit, they took the Bhagavatam and pulled out of the Bhagavatam what um, the coherent message is. I, the other day, I, someone, I think it was Gauravani, uh, he sent me an article which was a review of a book written by a, a, a devotee scholar, an academic scholar, who was a devotee. And it was a book about uh, biology and Hinduism and how kind of mapping out, I had read it some time ago, mapping out possible ways in which modern science could, could uh, interface with Hinduism in today's world. Um, 
and um, improve their, I guess, would be their, their, their picture of the nature of reality, or um, uh, at least have tried to pay some attention to a huge uh, religious sector of the world, India. You know, it's mostly Christians arguing with the with the uh, with the scientists and so forth, and the atheists. So was that was it was a, was a good book? I thought it was well done. But anyway, this re re reviewer said that, like, first of all, he said, "Well, it's really not about Hinduism. It's about the Shrimad Bhagavatam, and it's really not about the Shrimad Bhagavatam. It's about what the Gaudian people think the Shrimad Bhagavatam is about." Mm -hmm. And I kind of chuckled because I thought, "Come on, let's talk about it." And, Let's look at the Sandarbha Sajiva Goswami, where he brings out in a very compelling way that the, the, the idea that the Bhagavad has a co cohesive, coherent message and thrust, um, uh, drawing out, as he does so, arguments that, that Others might use to say, really, it's about um, Advaita Vedanta over here. Kairalyam, hmm? Prayojanam, Kairalyam. For example, this is something that affected the 12th canto. And the Prayojan is Kaivalyam. Kaivalyam, of course, is the word uh, often used by the monists, by Shankar, and so forth. So, somebody reads the verses, so here it's talking about Advaita, over here it seems to be talking about. Bhakti is just a jumble again, or a jungle of sounds. And so Jiva Goswami takes those types of statements that would seem to support the lack of coherence in the Bhagavatam and demonstrates how it's just the opposite, drawing out other meanings from Kaivalya, demonstrating that it means love also, or something like that. Um, and in a very sophisticated way, in a very compelling way, he makes the case, of course, in a scenario for the Bhagavatam itself, being the center of the sacred texts, which is what Hinduism derives from. And 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 then what is the what is the message of the Bhagavatam? I mean, the insight that he had, it is it's just like it's like, where's my hat? Where's my hat? And somebody says, It's on your head, Marsh. Oh, Oh yeah, something like that. Hmm? Like I've asked for towels, it's right there. Hmm? So the way he he he, he 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 says, well, what's the Bhagavatam about? How will we know? Well, let's ask the author. What does he say? And he goes to the history of the Bhagavat's manifestation as it's recorded in the Bhagavatam itself in the seventh chapter, and Siddha Goswami is explaining the trance of Vyas. How Vyas, as I say, under the inspiration of Nard, went into trance and samadhi with a purpose, express purpose of coming out and writing something that in no uncertain terms um, emphasized the efficacy and essential role of bhakti in the jiva's attaining freedom and, and love in the full sense of these terms. So, I mean, it's like nobody ever thought of it like that. But when you hear it, well, that's a good idea. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. What, what Vyasa entered into trance, he came out, he describes his trance in several verses, what he experienced there, how he saw the, he saw Bhagavan and his Sarup Shakti, he saw the Maya Shakti, he saw the Jeev Shakti suffering under the influence of the Maya Shakti. He saw the remedial measure to the Jeeva's plight in the form of bhakti and so forth. And so that's what the book's about. You get a kind of a nutshell, a chinti beta beta there, arguably. So anyway, it's very masterful. And um, um, no one has paid as much attention to the Bhagavad as the goal is, because no other sampradaya accepts it to the same extent. I mean, it, it is much appreciated by Bhagavad, of course, when Nimbarka is a Ragnarok sampradaya, it's also because the very heart 
really of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm. So I chuckled and thought, yeah, it is about Hinduism. And the Bhagavatam is about what Hinduism is really about. And the Gaudias is really what the Bhagavatam is really about. We can make a good case for that. Fairly objective case. We're ready to meet the, the, the challenge, <laughs> if you will. Um, so uh, we blessed that uh, the task uh, of, of assimilating and understanding or, or, or deriving the essential message out of the sacred text of the Hindus, which is varied only in that it's talking to different types of psychologies and suggesting different types of worship for them that will bring them all ultimately in the same uh, direction. Uh, or in the, toward to, 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 to moksha, and uh, of which there are basically two types, with form or without form. And, uh, and, and thus, uh, and different types of mukti, moksha, with form. Um, Brahma bhakti, Krishna bhakti, Narayan bhakti, and so forth. So a variegated uh, transcendence. Anyway, uh, we're, we're lucky <laughs> to have the Goswami. So with regard to Shiva, which is somebody who's appearing here, there, and everywhere, mm-hmm. has his own Purana, Shiva Purana. Um, appears in the Bhagavatam, he's everywhere. And uh, so, how to put them all together, so to speak, and, and, uh, and uh, understand it in an essential way that, of course, for us, relative to our pursuit of uh, Vaj Bhakti. Mm-hmm. And, of course, they take the Goswamis, Sri Jiva Goswami, our Tattvacharya, has taken us to Sri Brahma Samhita, a beautiful book. Uh, the, the fifth chapter of which was recovered by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his tour of South India. And when returning to Puri, he said, all the Siddhanta can be found in this book. Mm-hmm. Obviously all the things we talk about are not entirely found in the book, but what he means by that is, Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamam Rajami, which is the refrain uh, from verse 29 onward for the most part of the, of the text. Uh, where Brahma is glorifying Govinda, having described his abode, hmm? Goloka, hmm? and um, and how from there the world comes about and so forth, and begins to glorify um, Govinda, Gopeshwar Krishna, Govinda Dev, Gopal Dev, and that glorification largely in relation to other manifestations of divinity. So, in relation to Brahma, in relation to Ganesh, in relation to Durga, in relation to Shiva, etc. And so, if you look at it you carefully, you can see, oh, it's saying Krishna's two Bhagavan so I am, which is the, the, uh, the Paribas Sutra of, of the Bhagavatam, the, the key, the password, to understanding the tattva of the Bhagavatam. As I have often said, the bhava arises out of the tattva. So we gotta get the tattva, if you get the tattva right, as Krishna says in the Gita, and I cited this maybe this morning, aham sarva sipra vo matasa vandavartate iti mat bhava dante mam buddha bhava samandita if you wanna do buddha bhava samandita, raga bhava samandita, the kind of worship, that the Gaudias are about, you have to, you, you have to have the, the, if you want to have, if you want to give unconditional love of God, love, uh, engage in that, and give without reservation, without expectation of return, wholeheartedly, completely, then you have to have a source that can take completely. And of course, that is Krishna Vasaraj, and he can take all kinds of love in ways that the other divinities come along. And in this way, he has ascertained his position in the kingdom of love, of God, 
which is the real world, is, 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 takes the position of the fountainhead. Hmm? The fountainhead of all forms of divinity, the very heart of the body of divinity. Can we get a little light in here? You haven't turned on your indulgences sufficiently. <laughs> it was exciting. So, um, every Mahaprasita Tattva is found here. This essential key point of the Tattva, Krishna is the center. Krishna is the complete and supreme taker. He's the stomach of the body, of, uh, of uh, reality, and if you want to feed and nourish all the parts, that's where you put food. He's the root of the tree of uh, existence. So, we find this in the book, and we find a verse about the Shiva, the Tattva of Shiva. It's a good place to start, and there he's described as something like yogurt, in comparison to milk, mm -hmm. uh, with an additive, milk becomes yogurt. Now, Jiva Goswami, in his commentary, explains that Shiva is not really a transformation of Vishnu or Krishna, mm -hmm. like yogurt could be considered a transformation of. Um, milk, but he is like what happens, well he's, he, the, the analogy, the comparison of yogurt to milk is with regard to the outcome, the, the addition of things. There's Vishnu with an addition of things hmm, that constitute Shiva. So what is the addition of things? Vishnu, he is Vishnu combined with a little bit of Ladini and Samvid. These are two of the three elemental constituents of the Sarup Shakti. Ladini means feeling, Ananda, love. And Samvid means knowing. So, our Bhakti. When it's mature, will be constituted of a who stand on the ground of Sandini, so pure existence, Sutrasattva. And uh, he made up of a particular combination of Sambhids and Vladi. According to the Sambhid, according to the knowing, I know myself as a friend of Krishna. I know myself as a handmaid of Radha. And the Vladini will be slightly different in order to develop. Relative to optimal bhav, up to um, short of that, it's about sabhya bhakti, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Mm. So, a, a little bit of Ladini and some bit part of this composition, mm. Vishnu with, with this, with a little bit of Tamaguna and a little bit of Jiva Tattva. <laughs> this is Shiva. <laughs> This is a complex well, complex divinity. So given these uh, constituents that make up the Shiva, we can understand easily, readily, how he plays out in different ways. For example, even in the Bhagavatam. He's, he's Rudra. I don't know, there's several of them. Were there nine of them or something like that? Eleven. Eleven Rudras. Rudras. So this is a particular manifestation of Shiva that the Jiva can become that Shiva. So he has a little bit of Tatasta Shakti in his constitution. That is the Rudra side that the Jiva can become a Rudra. How you become a Rudra? <laughs> uh, it's said that if you if this were reminds me of a point we raised this morning. If you practice Varnashram perfectly, 
for a hundred lifetimes, you can become a Brahma. Now, that is to become a Brahma by way of karma, the karma mark. You could also become a Brahma through Gyan mark, you could also become a Brahma through Bhakti mark, as in the case of Gop Kumar, for example. He became a Brahma in the context of Bhakti mark. So there are different Brahmas who can attain the post of Brahma, I should say, by different methods. So the method to attain position of Brahma, post of Brahma, by karma is a perfect execution of Varnashram for hundred lifetimes. So you can, you can, so you can imagine Brahma is a pretty pious person. He's called Vidhi. He, he knows the rules. Vidhi means rules. He's like the personification of doing it right. Hmm? From a dharmic point of view. That's why when he saw Krishna doing it wrong, his own guru, who had appeared to him at the dawn of creation in Gopavesh, Gopavesh dressed as a Gopa, with the Gyan Mudra, blessing him with the mantra and giving him initiation. When the next time he saw him eating rice and yogurt out of his, out of his left hand and putting it in the mouths of his friends and having them put food in his mouth from their mouths, they would taste it and they would think, oh, this is the best piece, I'll give that to Krishna. Oh, this piece is second best, I'll give that to my friends. This piece is third best, I'll take that to <laughs> And so he's, he saw this, these cowherds looked like his, his guru, he was not acting properly, it wouldn't seem, in an embarrassing kind of way. So Krishna is appearing again in his life, in his life as a sadhaka, to further enlighten him about the sanskar from which he received at the time of initiation. We find in the ninth chapter of the second canto of the Bhagavatam, he received impressions for Sakyarasa, very clearly stated in the text of the Bhagavatam. So, it's the end of our Sampadaya. <laughs> we have to play some place for it. <laughs> uh, and then Brahma Madhva Gaudi is Sampadaya. So, you see, of course, this is the obvious early the beginning of Krishna's uh, Calvary life. And uh, um, so he, he sees him again and, and sees what that Sakyamas is all about. And it's, it's bewildering to him. But he, 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 he gets good, good, good instruction in the example of Krishna without saying a word to him. <laughs> um, but, but you can become a Brahma by karma. And as I'm explaining, if you, if you perfectly execute Varnashram for a hundred lifetimes, so how you become a Rudra? That is a hundred lifetimes as Brahma. <laughs> you perfectly execute the huh? life of the Brahma, I guess, without getting distracted, you can become Rudra, they said. So, so the Jiva can become a Shiva, because Shiva Tattva has a little Tattva Shakti. Yeah. And then he has a little Tamagun, as I mentioned. So then we find a manifestation of Shiva who's presiding over the Tamaguna, who has those Tamaguna associates that Daksha didn't want him to come to the party. If you bring him to the party, to the sacrifice, he'll bring all those weird people. <laughs> all the Buddhas and Pratas and all the Tamagun people. So there's this side of, of Shiva, and then, it, then he's Vishnu. So, in the form of Sada Shiva, he, he has then much to do with the manifestation of the world, the creation. And of course, that takes us to the Ladini and the Sambhit that are part of this composition that makes him a Vaishnav. Vaishnavana Vrtashana. How does it take us there? Because, well, in Gaudiya Sampradaya, that Sada Shiva appears in the world as a Dvaita Charger. Shimanadvaita Charger, 
Jai. Mm-hmm. Then he brought Mahaprabhu to the world mm-hmm. with his puja. Therefore, Vaishnavana Mita <laughs> He must be the greatest Vaishnav. He brought Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the world mm-hmm. by his puja. He brought Krishna on the bank of the Ganga. So for us, then, the most important side is we don't, not to concern about the Rudra or the Tamaguna side. The creation, the Shristi Leela part, we have something to concern with that. We're, in, we're involved in it. We have to understand it somewhat to, to, to uh, come out of it and understand the dispensation within it that's been afforded us, as I say, through the way to call, through his puja. Yeah, yeah, bringing as he did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the world, but there are obviously uh, further manifestations of Shiva as devotee. Mm-hmm. It, we should mention that Narada Muni was searching for the highest devotion in Brihad Bhagavatamrita in the first canto of the text, and when he got to Shivalok, there. And he said, Oh Shiva, you are you are the best devotee. He's meditating on Sankarshan, doing kirtan, um, madly and so forth. And um, after he profusely glorified Shiva, Shiva plugged his ears, says, What are you talking about? I have no devotion. There's, 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 I'm not the best devotee, I'm hardly a devotee at all. I've done this, I've done that, talking about his, what I've done with it, you know, as a, my Tamaguna side, my Rudra side, how in, how in, 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 in Leela I fought with Krishna. That's actually a higher thing, we have to come to that. I allowed Krishna to worship me, Ram worshipped me, I'm going to Lanka. Kind of devotee of mine. <laughs> so he, like this, protested. He protested. And then he said, if you want to speak to a devotee, go to Prahlad. But as we'll see, actually, Shiva's devotion surpasses that of Prahlad. Let me give you an example, a few examples. When Narada went to Prahlad and said, Oh, you're the greatest devotee. Prahlad said, What are you talking about? I'm not a devotee at all. And he pointed to Hanuman. Right? So Narada went to Hanuman. And who's Hanuman? Hanuman is another manifestation of Shiva. Now Shiva is above <laughs> Prahlad. And from Hanuman he went to the Pandavas. Among the Pandavas is Bhima. And he's a manifestation of Shiva. Interestingly, when we come to Bhima, when we think of Vayu, we think of Shiva, we think of who? As Godias. Madhva. It's the Brahma, Madhva, Godias, and Padaya. So Madhva is thought to be a combined form of Hanuman and Vayu, Bhima. So it's pretty ironic. <laughs> In this sense, Madhva is a manifestation of Shiva, in whose sampradaya they say a mantra every time they pass urine. Hmm? I'm passing urine on Shiva. He is a manifestation of Shiva. Hmm? In other words, Shiva <laughs> appeared in the world as Shankar, it's thought, and preached a non devotional ideology, worldview. Hmm? story of the Vedas and so forth. And Shang and Madhva's main dialectic uh, adversary in his theistic dialect and debates was with Shankar's uh, monism. Shankar advocated Advaita and what is the advocacy of Madhva? Dvaita, just the polar opposite. Non-dualism, dualism. 
course, Mud was a great devotee. And so, you see, what, what secrets you uncover in Gaudi Vaishnavas <laughs> about everybody. Hmm? He's fighting against Shiva, but actually, he's some, in some way a manifestation of Shiva. Hmm? Gaudi Vaishnavas is harmonizing all these things. For the Gaudi, they'll go into the Shiva temple. Mud was well moved and so forth. Hmm? I don't know if the mantra came from mud, but probably not, probably from later on down the, you know, just like Prabhupada said, ah, these godbrothers are all bell ringers. Once. They're doing nothing for Chitana. He expressed his frustration in the microphone. <laughs> it happens sometimes. And then send his disciples, practically written mantras against them. <laughs> Yeah, we all never see their face. If you see their face, jump in the Gamji. So, <laughs> it's kind of like that, um, <laughs> unfortunately. So things can break down as, 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 as time goes on. And the disciples can pick fights that would cause their founders to roll over in their samadhi if they were uh, aware of it. And they are aware, of it, so take care not to do that. So then we go on from Bhima and the Pandas, and the Nard search goes up to, to Uddhava and Dwarka, and Uddhava, of course, has, has acquaintance with the Braj because he was sent there by Krishna to deliver a message to the inhabitants and to the gopis, and so he knows, oh, you're looking for Bhakti, go to Vrindavan. There you find the gopis. Love. And where do we find what, what, do we, what do we find there in the gopi's love that's showcased in Srimad Bhagavatam in the Vraspancha Jaya, the five chapters of the Rasa Leela? This is the Supreme Leela. Hmm? The Rasa Leela. The Supreme Leela. It's a Supreme Leela because it, it is the consummation hmm, of the of the romantic relationship between Krishna and and Radha, Krishna, and the gopis. Given it's a hidden one, it's in the forest somewhere, but it's coming out and acknowledge, full acknowledgement. Hmm? There's a partial acknowledgement during the gopi bust of our Leela when Krishna stole her clothes. He said, we'll finish this later. Hmm? That's Rasa Leela. Hmm? And it's also the Supreme Leela in that the Madhurya Rasa ideal is the highest ideal, ideal in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And the Rasa Lila during the Sarg Purnim, showcased in the Bhagavatam, if you study it carefully, you'll see through the eyes of the Goswamis, it, it is a portal, it's an entry. There's an entry there. You can enter into Madhurya Rasa there. So it's inviting. You can enter there. Some gopis came, they couldn't join the rasa dance. Hmm? And that separation, they're, they're newcomers, they're sadhana siddhas. They came for that. And not being able to enter by separation, they became qualified. Later, in the Uddhava Gita section of Bhagavatam, we find them again. Hmm? They didn't die. If they died, then they couldn't, the Rasa Leela couldn't have gone on. Some gopis died, they couldn't come. It would have been the end of the party. Hmm? It would have been Rasa Vas. Hmm? So he had studied the language of the Bhagavatam very carefully through the commentaries of Goswami to understand these points. Again, as I said, Vyas brought out Bhakti in no uncertain terms in the Bhagavatam, and the Goswamis <laughs> brought out the essence of of bhakti, the bhakti of bhaktis, hmm? in their commentaries on the Bhagavatam. So, when we go to Vrindavan, and we go to the gopis, and we go to the Rasa Leela, if you want to get in, what are you, who are you going to meet at the gate? They're going to meet Shiva there. Hmm? He's got a little bit of Ladini and a little bit of Sambit. <laughs> you can't quite get in the Rasa Leela, but he's posted at the gate. This is Gopishwar. Hmm. Somewhere it's written, 
that how do the left side of Krishna and Radha is manifest? Now the right side is Rupeshwar. He's the Mool Mahadev, the root of all these different forms of Shiva. In the fullest sense of uh, Shiva as, as a Vaishnava, which is, again, our uh, particular concern with regard to Mahadev. And not only is he at the gate there, in linga form, now you can see him, um, but in other linga forms he's strategically situated throughout the Dham as the Chetrapal, the protector of the Dham. Hmm? If we want to uh, look at Shiva in terms of Shiva's Bhakti, in terms of Shiva being the kind of Vaishnava that the Bhagavatam concludes saying, Vaishnavani Natashambhu. As the Bhagavat is the best of the Brahmas, as the Ganga is the best of the rivers, so Shiva is the, is the best of the Vaishnavas. How, how, how we do that? How we plumb the depths of that? You know, Parvati. She asked Chief, what's the highest kind of worship? And he said, worship of Vishnu is the highest. Arāraṇam sāvīśaṁ Vishnu arāraṇam param. And when Devi heard that, she was a little disappointed because she was a worshipper of Shiva. And understanding her reaction, he said, however, tadiyāna samarchanam who is the worshipper of Vishnu? He is higher. He, he worships the worshiper. The worship of Vishnu is the highest, but he who worships the worshiper of Vishnu is even higher. And then she was happy because she knew my husband. He's always meditating on, on Vishnu. Hmm? Right? So if we want to understand the devotion of Shiva for Vishnu, we should Maybe look at someone who's devoted to Shiva. Who in our sampradaya of significance was most devoted to Shiva? Sanatana Goswami Prabhupada Kijai. Wow. <laughs> you can't get any more important than that. In Gaur Leela, amongst those who have been selected by Mahaprabhu and commissioned to be the principal revealers and distributors of his um, ecstasy and reality. Rup Sanatan, Jiva Goswami, the founding acharyas of the Sampradaya, Sanatan, Indra Leela, he's the leader, he's the elder to whom Rupa defers in his great works. The oldest, and what was his, how his uh, understanding of the Bhagavatam, the original Gaudiya commentary on the Bhagavatam, Sri Vaishnava Toshani Ijai. And he wrote it for the pleasure of the Vaishnavas, <coughs> Sanatana Swami. Sitting as he used to be with so many Brahmins, studying the Bhagavatam, couldn't attend to his government duties, got him in trouble. Studying the Bhagavatam got him in big trouble with the law. He broke the law to study the Bhagavatam. I broke the law to distribute the Bhagavatam two times. <laughs> so some of you may have yet as well. He broke the law to study the Bhagavatam. And the Bhagavatam protected him. Right. Bhagavatam brought him under the shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And, what, and, and, and he wrote his, the first Gaudiya commentary on, on Bhagavatam. And, and you should understand, the Gaudiya commentaries on the Bhagavatam, I mean, in, 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 the Bhagavatam is about the Braj Leela, so the Bhagavatam is regularly recited in, in Braj. And you can't do a recital of the Bhagavatam without reference to Vaishnava Tosani, to 
uh, Sarta Darshani, I don't know, uh, Vishnu's commentary, uh, sometimes thought to be a reincarnation of Rupa Goswami, uh, to Jiva Goswami's uh, commentary. These Gaudiya commentaries, this is, it's clear in Braj that they knew the Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. If it like Jiva Goswami writes in the Sandarvas, I offer my respect to Rupa and Sanatana, who are, who are glorified in Mathura. It's one time to think to be a glorious devotee, but to be a glorious devotee in Mathura, where everybody's a liberated devotee, that's special. Hmm? And the leader of that group defers to Sanatana Goswami. And Sanatana Goswami was very attached to the worship of Mahadev in Braj. When he lived in Vrindavan, when he was residing, residing in Vrindavan near Madan Mohan, even in his old, old age, Munda Baba, as he was called, shaved-headed Baba. I love the story, you know, when he, he disappeared from the world on Guru Purnim. This comes in like July, every year, Guru Purnim. And, and in some ways he's the original Guru of Gaudius, he takes side Gaur and Nityananda. Uh, and he, uh, he used to always keep his head shaved. That's why I shaved my head. <laughs> of course, it's going to take it down the line. When I um, first had a conversation with some devotees about that, before my head was shaved, I said, why do you shave your heads? And, I mean, we were talking about the philosophy, but I, I had to be told why do you take a, I had to ask why do you take a cold shower? <laughs> okay, I got it. Why do you shave your heads? And the answer I got from one of my godbrothers, his name is now Bill, and he said, because Prabhupada does that. Now that's kind of not a good explanation, but I thought that's a good explanation. They love him. They love him. That you have to have a guru. You should have a guru that you love. <laughs> I love him, therefore she should be my guru. <laughs> so I thought it was a great answer. He goes, well, he was just here with him because there was technical and the Sika is here. <laughs> the, the, the chakra, the, you go out here, Vishnu can pull you this way. <laughs> and, uh, and all these things, but he just said, because Prabhupada does. And I just thought, oh, that's just great. <laughs> I'll do that. Give me the, give me the scissors and go for it. I just thought that was so charming, so beautiful, compelling. Mm -hmm. And when Sanatana Goswami left the world in Braj, it said, every man, woman, and child shaved their head. Mm -hmm. Say, we follow him. Mm -hmm. That's such a, there's such a command of the theology, the philosophy, such an example of that, and such a human being. You have to understand, such a human being he was. Such a full human being. People would come to Sanatan with petty arguments from the village. Whatever he would say, they would, they would go with that. Mm -hmm. he, would, he would give counsel as, you know, it, if he would walk through the villages, when he would arrive, there's Mundabhat, and the children would come, run to him, and hold his hand. He had a great attachment for, for Shiva. So let's go, we should go to Shiva through Sanatana Goswami. <laughs> he used to go daily when he was staying in Vrindavan near Ram Gopal, Ram Temple, to have the darshan of the uh, Gopishwar. But it said as he got older and older, then Gopishwar was disturbed by the, to think about the effort that it must have taken Sanatana Prabhu to come the distance. And so he told him, don't come here anymore, you're too old. Hmm? But Sanatana could not give up the idea. Hmm? And so he kept coming, so then Gopeshwar appeared to him in a dream and said, okay, enough of this, you can come halfway. Hmm? So he went, went halfway, and there was a new manifestation. Uh, what is it called? 
Another Ma. We have Gopishwa Mahadeva, another Lingam of Shiva. I forget his name. It's halfway between Manakas. So then he only walked halfway every day. And then, of course, he used to circumambulate in a garage in Govardhan. When he was in Govardhan, he would take shelter of Chakrishwar Mahadeva, the Linga there. Then he went to the outskirts, a Kamilan of the rural uh, aspect of, of Braj, which includes the whole Mandala of Matura, which is a metropolitan, the metropolitan nature, but it's Kamilan. Then he would take shelter of Kamishwar Mahadeva. Hmm? So wherever he went, there was a Shiva. And then he'd set up this place for Bhajan there uh, and take shelter of him. So he was very attached to Shiva. And, of course, as you know, it is from Shiva and the Shiva Purana that we get the information from Scripture about Manjari Upasana. How to worship as a Manjari. I want to be like Shiva. Hmm? I wonder if Sanatana was attached to Shiva. What was his conception of Shiva? How was his thinking? There, within the context of the Shiva Purana, I think there's like 59 chapters of what's called an Agama. Hmm? Uh, dealing with worship and ritual and so forth. And there the worship, the Manjari Upasana, the worship of the Manjari, how the, how the Manjari, the age of the Manjari, the, the, her service, mantras corresponding and so forth. All this comes from, from Shri. Hmm? Uh, and it is, within the Shiva Purana, it's the Sanat Kumar Samhita. And Sanatana Goswami, of course, is said to be a partial manifestation, incarnation of Sanatana Kumar. Complicated, huh? Mm -hmm. And of course, it was the Kumaras, led by Sanat Kumar, who received the Bhagavatam. Just like Brahma received the Bhagavatam in seed form, in four verses, the chapter spoke of the Bhagavatam from Brahma. The Bhagavatam tells of another revelation of its significance. The Kumaras received the essential message of the Bhagavatam from Sankarshan, who is the deity of Shiva, who Shiva is meditating on. And of course there, these Kumaras are very um, Central to what? The Nimbarka Sampradaya. They're the, the, the fountainhead of the Nimbarka Sampradaya. And Rupa Goswami writes about them too. What did Rupa Goswami say about those Kumaras? You don't know. Radhe Jai Jai Mahalapa. You know? At the end of this prayer, he says, and, and the, the, the four Kumaras, they're worshiping her. Hmm? They're worshiping her. We find them also in the Gopal Tapa and the Upanishad, which is arguably, it was about the worship of Gopal. You can't worship him without worshiping Radha. So these are some thoughts about Shiva. Hmm? His, uh, significance for us, which I looked at him a little bit through the eyes of Sanatan Goswami, how he's represented as a devotee and as a devotee in Braj. He's a devotee in other places as well. In uh, uh, one other way, I should say also, that he's present in Braj, come to mind, is that he's there as Nandishwar Hill, the hill on which Nanda, Nanda Baba's house is residing. You know you have Govardhan, you have Varshana, there's a hill and Radharani's house is there, and Nanda, 
now the most house on a hill. So you have Vishnu, Shiva, and Brahma. She's Vishnu, Vishnu, Brahma, and Shiva. Brahma is the hill for Radharani's house, and Shiva, the hill for Nandamar's house, where in Nandagram there are many, of course, Shakiras, Leela's there. That's where the great um, Krishnadas Babaji retired and, 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 and was placed into Samadhi, the Sakiras devotee of the disciple of Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Thakur, Nandagram. So there is, this is where Shiva then manifests as the hill in Nandagram to participate in Sakiras Leelas. You know that it's mentioned in another Purana somewhere, uh, cited by, by Kavikarapur, when he's talking about Advaita Acharya, right? Is it Advaita, Advaita Acharya? He says that, that he is the Sadashiva, uh, who manifested also as a, as a coward boy in Braj, so uh, without giving a name. So somewhere there in Nandagram, me in the hill wasn't enough. <laughs> he had to actually take place, take part in Sakya Rasa and take part in Madhuri Rasa. Of course, Jiva Goswami describes him, Rupa Goswami, excuse me, in, in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu as a devotee in a broader sense in Dasiras mixed with Sakya. Some type of some cool bundling, I should say. It's a bundling of Rasas, not a mixing. So, as you can see, we have a lot of reasons to worship Chaval. Those of you who are interested in that, we have a mantra <laughs> given to us that's very popular amongst the, uh, the Gaudias in general and uh, in our party bar in particular. Bhakti Sarat Sarsitaku, when he established his temples, Radha Krishna and Mahaprabhu, he also had a little shrine outside the temple for the worship of Gopishwar. So in order to enter into the circle of Radha and Krishna, we had to go through Gopishwar and get his, his blessings. So he taught his disciples this uh, verse. Uh, uh, if you want, I'll give it to you. You'll have to come and talk to me. And then we can worship Madhi Shiva Kija. So, a few words on Shiva. Any questions? Yes. Does Shiva has some special mission in Krishna Lila or in Raj? Does he have a special mission in yes. Krishna Lila? Yes. Well, as a Dwaita, he has a mission in Gaur Lila. Yes, hmm. but in Krishna Lila. Well, in Krishna Lila, he has a mission to protect the dawn. Paul means to protect. Protector, protector means the, 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 the field, the dawn. So he's the protector of the dawn. Um, he's the protector of the Rasalikas, but he's, he's, so you can't break break in. He's, he's kind of like the bouncer. You know what a bouncer is? <laughs> he's a bouncer. That's his mission. <laughs> what is his mission is to, uh, he's a bicycle. So his mission is to, is to uh, help those who want to enter into Prajna Bhakti, to assist them. Whether it's as a gopa or as a gopi, he's there to help us. That's the Vaishnava's mission, the Gopi Vaishnava's mission. What else? Isn't Sanatana Goswami's Bhajan Kuti also by it's the same place. Oh, the same place. Krishna Das Babaji's. Yeah, he has. That's something. Well, he has a bunch of kutiyas in different places. He has it in Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, but there too. One more. Yeah, so yeah, wherever he has a same, wherever his place of worship were, there would be a manifestation of Shiva there as well. What else? I was not clear on the connection with uh, with Bayu or Hanuman because isn't Hanuman a manifestation of Bayu? Yeah, they say Shiva too. 
That's a doctor, but I'm going to go use that. So did you have a nice day today? Beautiful day here, Polish countryside. <laughs>